All we're going to do today is work questions. I might put a little bit of uh, a little bit of chapter three. We may go over a little bit of chapter three, maybe one or two questions, just to say this because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you if you have two thirty next semester, your team. Well, did Hubert show you how to do this? So make sure you say, yeah, we did that. All right. So I'm gonna show you a little bit out of. Um, uh, I'm going to pull a couple of questions out of chapter three and I'll go over those Tuesday. And that means that I'm going to incorporate a little bit, two or three questions out of chapter three. I'm going to incorporate that on the test. So your unit three test or unit, yeah, unit three test, I think, will have unit three and a little bit of unit four on it. Okay, I think the last problem we did was the uh, between the two curves. So let's do one of these. And this is the ones I was wanting to do. This is before area. So find the area from 2, negative 2 to 3 of a piecewise function. So that means y'all automatically will shut down and not do the problem. Right? Two yep. minus one half X. Oh yeah, it's got a fraction in it, so you can forget this. X is greater than zero. And X squared plus two, X is less than equal to zero. All right, first of all, I want you to graph it. You don't have to graph it perfectly. Just take you a graph or take you a, you know, sketch a graph out here and graph those two. You know, X is greater than zero on the bottom. So let me do this because I don't have any posters. Let me take this 2 minus 1 half X. X is greater than zero. All right, that's done in yellow. So I'm going to say X is greater than zero. So that function will go this direction. And this function, we'll do that in verde. Wait, we can't see the sheet if you're like color coding it. We can see you. Oh. Yeah. Like we can't see what you're doing. There you go. Give it a second. Let me know if you get it. There it is. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Oh, there's a delay. Let's turn off our videos if y'all don't mind. Because that is too much of a delay. Let me turn off my phone. I already turned it off. So it must be the videos. Okay, so y'all just just speak out and you got a question. All right, so you should be able to see this. And the green will be on this side. All right, so what does x squared plus 2 look like? Well, I'm going to take, I don't have a pencil. Let me see if this is a pencil. Not a single dang pencil, all pens. Okay. Well, let's take my green. And we know that this y intercept right here is 2. 1, 2. And what does the x squared function look like on the left hand side? Looks like a parabola, doesn't it? Everybody with me? Yeah. Okay, so what does negative x squared, negative one half squared, well, you know that's a negative slope, and its y intercept is 2, but it goes this way. So there's our function. And they want us to go from negative 2, 
So I'm going to do this in blue. Negative 1, negative 2, 2, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's the area they want. Now, first of all, are these two the same function? No. So you're going to have to use the sum and difference rules of calculus, meaning you're going to have to break it up into two parts. Your first part is going to be from negative 2 to what? 0. Your second part is going to be from 0 to what? To 4. So now we're going to set it up. I'm going to set up the first part with the green, the antiderivative from negative 2 to negative 1 of x squared plus 2 dx using our sum and difference rule plus the antiderivative, and I know it's going to be hard to see, but I think this yellow will show up. Just doesn't show up on the whiteboard that way if that good. The antiderivative of zero to four. Oh, that's supposed to be zero, sorry. This is supposed to be zero. And then from zero to four of two minus one half x or negative one half x plus 2 dx. Alright, so I want you to take a second and do that. So the derivative here, of course, if you're watching the video, you could pause this and do the work and then see if you got it right. But it looks like here would be x to the third over 3 plus 2x evaluated at negative 2 and 0 plus let's see, that's going to be negative 1 half x to the second over 2 plus 2x evaluated at 0 and 4. And you can make that negative x squared over 4. This might be a dumb question, but why did you choose to use 4 instead of 3? Because I'm stupid, and I just decided to go to 4 up here. Okay, well, let's do this. If you don't mind, can I just make it a 4 up here in the original problem? Would that make y'all go crazy? I'm sorry. No. Okay, now I don't feel dumb. Okay, I'm so confused. Yeah, I'm the dummy. I'm the one that messed up. It's the vodka this morning. <laughs> I don't know why. I saw the 3 right there. I even said 2 to 3, and then I put a 4 right there. I have no idea where the hell that 4 came from. All right. So, anyway, go ahead and simplify the yellow a little bit. You can simplify that, and that's going to be the final. The I'm not going to do it. We'll do it on another page. x to the 3rd over 3 plus 2x evaluated at negative 2 and 0 plus that's going to be negative x squared over 4 plus 2x evaluated at 0 and 4. Now that's what you're going to evaluate. So on the next page, go ahead and go ahead and do this. I'm going to write it with parentheses 
Uh, I'll tell you right now, the zeros are going to cancel out, so you don't have to do the zeros. You just have to do negative 2. And now remember, that's a minus. So it's a minus a negative 2. So that's going to make a difference on your signs. Where the 4 is not going to make that much of a difference. It's just going to be minus 4. So I might write it out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go to the next page. And I'm going to write in green, parenthesis squared. I'm sorry, parenthesis to the third over three plus two times parenthesis bracket minus bracket parentheses cubed over three plus two times parenthesis. Now I'm writing this out for a reason because you're going to see that that negative right there is going to make this different. And even though this is zero, this right here, that negative right here is going to make that different. So just bear with me. I'm going to re rewrite the other. Okay, plus, that plus is from adding these two regions together. <coughs> negative, <coughs> excuse me, negative parentheses squared over 4 plus 2 times parentheses minus parentheses, I'm sorry, negative parentheses squared over 4 plus 2 times parentheses. <clears throat> All right, start plugging and chugging. And the reason that negative is outside is because that negative one half was not incorporated into the square. So that's why that negative is outside the parentheses. If you go back right here, that negative one half right there is not inside the square. So that's why it's still a negative out front. All right, so I'm going to plug in zero here. And negative 2 here. And then I'm going to plug in 4 and 0. 4 and 0. Now, the first one goes out to 0. Let's see, 0 minus this is going to give you something different than just zero plus, okay? So that negative is going to play a big part in changing this sign right here, these signs. Where here, it doesn't make any difference because you're subtracting zero, so it doesn't make any difference. That's why I wanted to show you that. So here we're going to get negative brackets, that negative 2 to the third power is negative 8. Plus, be a minus, uh, 2 times 2 is 4, which I'll change that in just a second. Plus, uh, 4 squared is 16, but that's a negative 16. So that's going to be negative 16 over 4 is negative 4 plus 
And now we're going to, we're probably going to have to get a common denominator because I don't know three. Let's just go ahead and distribute that negative. Clean that up. And that's going to be eight thirds plus four over one plus a four. And let's get a common denominator of three right here. So I'm going to take another color. I'm going to make that a three. One will go into three. Three times four is 12. Eight plus 12 is 20. So that's going to give us 20 over three. Twenty over three plus well that's going to be a one right here. So make that a three. One will go into three. Three times four is twelve. So that's going to be plus twelve thirds. And that's going to give you 32 thirds. And of course, that's what? Three will go in there 10 times, 10.67 square units. So the area right here, and we'll go over it right here in blue, the area between 2, negative 2, and 4 of those two functions is 10.67 square units. This is a test question. It's also a homework question. I saw it on the homework right before class started. Okay. The original question was negative 2 to 3, and for some reason, I decided to put a 4 right there. I have no idea why, so I changed it to 4 for those people watching on the video to make sure you understand why it's different. So the, if you go from negative 2 to 3, the answer is 10.4. So write that down. You want to do it, you know, you want to do the original negative 2 to 3, the answer is 10.4. So if you do negative 2 to 3, the answer is 10.4 square units. Question on that one. That's a good test question. I gave you another good test question the other day. It was the difference between uh, negative x squared and positive x squared. And that's going to be a test question. I don't know if I still got it in my notes here, but I really don't like this question. Yeah, here it is. And let's go over it again just in case, because I kind of went over it last the other day. And I'll do this one in two colors that are easier to see. I think y'all can see the green okay, so I'm not going to use the yellow. I'll just use the blue. So let's go with, or the peach. Let's go with a peach or pink. I got a peach and a pink. Which one would you rather have, peach or pink? Peach. Peach? Okay, we'll go with peach. All right, so the first one is f of x is equal to negative x squared plus a. Now I write it different because I think that's a stupid way to write 8 minus x squared. I think that's a stupid way to write uh, functions. And I don't know why this book does that. And then in peach, we're going to do g of x is equal to x squared. And like I say, even though we did this the other day, I don't mind going over it again 
because for some of y'all, y'all never seen this before, taking the area between two curves. So it kind of would help to go over it again. So I'm going to take my handy dandy sketcher and I'm going to make it big because you need to understand what I'm doing here. Okay, we know that this function has a zero y-intercept because it's plus... Oh, shoot. I dropped more things. Plus zero. So you know the y-intercept is zero there. The y-intercept on the green is 8. And this one is opening downward because of the negative. So I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you can actually do the x-intercepts. Uh, x squared is equal to 8. So the square root of 8 is 2.9. So... And how do I know that? Because the square root of 9 is 3. Uh, 1, 2, 3. 2.9 is right there. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. 2.9 is right there. So here is your uh, parabola is pointing downward. Your parabola pointing upward, that's easy to draw because the vertex and the x-intercept is the same thing. Now, if you want to draw, you know, accurately, then this 1 be 1, negative 1 be 1, 2 would be 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 would be 4. And you get something like that. And they want to know the area, and we'll do that in pink. Got to use that pink. The pink area is what we're trying to find. Okay, so the first thing you do on this problem is you sketch it. So I already talked about that. We'll do this in red. One. Sketch the graph. Sketch the graph. Two. Shade. Shade the region. Three. You need to figure out or you need to I can't think of the word right now. You need to determine. There we go. Determine the high side. Okay, determine the high side. What do you mean? We'll plug in X. Okay, plug in a number for X. Let's plug in 4. All right. If you plug in 4, what do you get? with the green term. If you plug in 4, you're going to get negative 4. Neg I mean, you plug in negative 4, it's going to be positive squared. It's going to be 16, but a negative is going to be 8. Okay? Right? Be negative 8. Yeah. Uh, so at 4, you're going to get a negative 8. So 4, right out here, you're going to get a negative 8. A negative. If you plug in positive 4, you're going to get a negative. What happens if you plug in 4 right here? You're going to get a positive 16. But that's not where these two points doesn't have anything to do with your region. Okay? And you need to put right here, high side of the region. Very important that you understand that. So let's plug in x is equal to 0. So what happens when we get x is equal to 0 here? We get 8. 0 plus 0 is 0. What's greater, 8 or 0? 
eight, eight. Hubert. So eight, this right here is your high side for the region. So you need to put high side for the region right there because that's the one you're going to subtract from. So I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a, let's see. Uh, I'm going to use the yellow for shading. This right here is your high side. That's your high side right there. Now, after you found your high side, now we got to set equal to zero. I mean, set equal to each other. Four. Set equal to each other. And when we do that, we're finding where they what? Intersect. This is very important. Why is it very important? Because I don't care where you are. I don't care what subject you're in. I don't care what college you're at. I don't care if you're in academia or the real world. Anytime you want to find the intersection of two lines, what do you do? I'm wanting y'all to interact. Oh, you set them equal to each other. You set them equal to each other. Whether you're in chemistry, biology, marketing, economics, algebra, calculus, if you want to find the intersection of two lines, you set them equal to each other. And that's going to find that point and that point as far as the X goes. Now, can you do that with your calculator? Sure. But I'm not I'm not going to teach you to use your calculator to do the last remaining sections, okay? I'm going to make you do it by hand so you can understand it. All right, so go ahead and set them equal to each other and solve. I'll do that on the next page. I'll write them out. Negative x squared plus 8. And I'm going to use red for the equals because that's very important that you understand. Set them equal to each other. X squared. Now, I don't like negatives, so we're going to take that negative X squared and we're going to take it across the river. And it becomes positive X squared. So now, because I don't want to use the two separate colors, now we've got 2x squared is equal to 8 divided by 2, and x squared is equal to 4, that's the square root of both sides. So our two intersection points are positive and negative what? 2. And, of course, you see that if you do a good graph, you see that. If you do a half-assed graph, you're not going to see it. Okay? And these, not only are they the intersection points, what else are they? They're your lower and upper what? Lower and upper bound. Bound. So your integration is going to go from negative 2 to 2. Now, 5 is real simple. Set up your intervals. And now you're ready to go. These six steps, five, these five steps are very important for you in 2.30 because you're going to be doing a lot of this. So you can bet your bottom dollar, if I'm going to give you five questions out of 
what are we, chapter 4.3, 4.4? If I'm going to give you four, four, five questions out of 4.4, three or four of them are going to be this. All right, so set it up. I'll go ahead and set it up. And I'm going to subtract the peach from the green. So I'm going to use my, let's see, what color do I need to use? I'm going to use, since I did blue with the upper and lower bounds, I'm going to use blue. So my integration from negative 2 to positive 2 of my green is my high side, negative x squared plus 8 minus, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to put a negative right here, and peach is x squared, and then dx. Y'all see the stuff I go through for y'all, I tell you. Mm -hmm. There we go. And that's going to be the antiderivative of negative 2 to 2. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative. So I'm going to get negative x squared plus 8 minus, and I'm just going to make it peach, minus x squared dx. Now, what's negative x squared minus x squared? Negative 2x squared, Hubert. That's right, class. Plus 8 dx. And there is your integration for the area between these two curves. And I have no idea why that has x to the 8th power. That's not supposed to be x to the 8th power. I need to take my medicine. That's supposed to be to the 2nd power. There we go. All right, I'm going to let y'all take the antiderivative, and I want y'all to do the evaluation. We should have done that in pink, because we'll do the evaluation in pink because I hatched it in pink, so we need to make the colors. So the derivative is going to be negative 2x to the third over 3 plus 8x evaluated at 3, I mean negative 2, and 2. Y'all got all that written down? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, I'll do it in pink. So that's going to be negative 2 parentheses to the third power over 3 plus 8 times parentheses brackets. Minus brackets negative 2 times parentheses to the third over 3 plus 8 times parentheses brackets. And I'm going to put a 2 here and a 2 here and a negative 2 here and a negative 2 there. Give y'all a couple of minutes.
What the heck was that? That was our oh, house Lord. line. Oh, that almost sounded like it was in my house. And I'm like, I don't have a ringer like that. <laughs> All right, so two to the third power is eight. So that's negative two times eight over three plus 16, close brackets, minus negative 2 times negative 8 over 3, minus 16. Now you're going to notice I'm going to do these step by step. And there's people that try to do all this in one step and they end up getting it wrong. So negative 16 over 3 plus 16 over 1. Minus bracket negative to be 16 over 3 minus 16 over 1. And I'm going to change those. I'm going to use my blue marker. And I'm going to, 1 will go into 3 3 times. 3 times 16 is 48. 1 will go into 3 3 times. 3 times 16 is 48. So I kind of skipped a step there. What's negative 16 plus 48? Well, 48 minus 16 is what, 32? I want to say 32. Minus 16 minus 48 is going to be negative 32 over 3. And those two negatives turn into a what? Positive. Positive. So our final answer in pink is 64 over 3, which is equal to 2. 2 will go in there. So the, to one, that'd be 1 third, which is 0.33. 21.3 square units. And that 21. Point three square units is the area of that pink area right there. Now there's all kind of applications to this. There's all kind of applications in engineering, finding the area, finding the uh, the earthwork under a, a road vertical curve, finding the area acreage wise on a horizontal curve going around a pond or going over a mountaintop. That's that is that is engineering. Um, mechanical engineering, same thing, except not curves, but individual parts, finding the area of individual parts and what if you cut this out, you know, how much area is left. Um, economics, business, you're talking about marginal cost versus uh, marginal um, profit or marginal revenue, whichever, or marginal revenue and marginal cost. You got the areas under the curve. So very, very, very important. Now, that's two times I went over that. So you should be good to go on that. Capiche? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You don't sound too enthused. It's so early. Yeah, yeah. well, y'all need to get with the program. It's the dang I'm live. <laughs> y'all need to get used to the made clocks. All right, let's do a nerd. Let's do, I'm going to do this, I'm going to write the, write this one in black. Y is equal to x to the third minus x squared minus 2x. Now I wrote that one in black because technically that's the only curve in the problem. 
Okay, and I'm going to do the highlights. I'm going to do them even though you can't see them very well. I'm going to highlight. There's a reason I'm doing it. Okay, and y is equal to zero, and x is equal to one. And x is equal to 2. Okay. You're supposed to be on autofocus, dummy. Here. Now, this is the way the question, the question will say, find the area between the bordered regions. That's what it's going to say or the borders, or the parameters. First thing you do is you draw a graph. Now, just for giggles, you can do the, the black one. Do that on your, do that on your uh, calculator. So you can actually see where it goes. One, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. Uh, let's see, negative one this way. So we've got a point there, point here. Point there. Uh, one negative two, and this point two. I'm talking to myself. So the actual graph, I think. Looks like that. I don't care how well you draw it. You've got to see it to understand what to do. And I'll show you why in just a second. All right, now I'm going to do the green line. Now that's not going to be hard at all. Because the green line is your X what? That's your x-axis. Y is equal to zero is your x-axis. So that's one boundary. Wish I had my highlighter. There. And x is equal to one. And x is equal to what? 2. And they want to know the area. Well, actually, the way that the question, I must not have wrote the question down right. They want to know this area, and I'm going to shade in yellow the area they want. Wait a minute. X is equal to negative one. Dork. Damn it. I'm sorry, I messed up. That negative one, that's supposed to be a negative one. So supposed to be, there we go. Okay, so erase that. That's why I couldn't figure out why that blue line was in the middle. It shouldn't have been in the middle. Okay, here's what they're wanting. That's what they're wanting. They want to know the area at negative 1 to here, that area right here above the green line, and the area below the green line right here between what? 0 and 2. Now, we don't have to find out where they intersect because you see where they intersect. 
but which one's the high line? Okay, which one is the high line right here? The black. So here, the high line is the black. Which one's the high line here? The green. Now, why is that going to make a difference? Because since this is negative, it's going to come out that it's below the x-axis with the negative. But since you are doing the high line and you're subtracting a negative, it will come out to be positive because the area is positive. Now, this is where you get in, this is where you get into it. If you don't do it the right way, you're going to come out with a negative, and then you're going to question yourself. Always remember to subtract from the high line of the region. So when I set up my original equation, I'm going to do x cubed minus x squared minus 2x minus 0 plus 0 minus what? x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. You always subtract from the high line of the region. I'm going to write that in red. Always subtract from the high line of the region. So that high line is right there and then right there. So let's set up our in integration. It'll be two integrals, this one and this one. And you're going to add them together because you're finding both the regions. So go ahead, I want you to set up I'll, I'll start you off. The first integration is going to be from negative 1 to 0. And you're not going to have to do anything because you're subtracting 0. The green line is 0, so you're subtracting 0. So that doesn't do anything. But it does something on the second side. I'll set it up down here on the bottom. That way I won't have to switch. Give y'all another minute or two. Have any of y'all had area under the curve before? No, I haven't. How about you, Mr. Nowak? No, I haven't. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Some teachers lobotomize their students at this point. I hope I'm not lobotomizing y'all. Uh, okay, got one no out of three. That's good. I don't know what that word means, so I chose not to answer. When you go in and take out part of your brain, and then when you put it back together, you walk around and you can't talk. You're lobotomized. Oh, no, I'm good. Okay. All right, so here we go. I'll set up this first region. And let's see, what color have I? Lavender. Mr. Squidward loves lavender. <laughs> There's lavender. Okay, lavender is going to be from 0 to negative 1 of x cubed minus x squared minus 2x minus 0. Okay, so you see that the minus 0, and I'll circle that in green, because that is this right here. That doesn't affect, when you subtract 0 from something, it doesn't affect it. Now over here, we'll color this one orange. 
and it's going to look red, but that's orange. See? That look, why does it look orange on the pen, but it looks red on daggum paper? It's a conspiracy. So from zero to two, of zero, which is the green line, minus brackets, x to the third, minus x squared, minus 2x dx. Now, why is this zero more important than this zero? Because this one the negative is going to what? It's going to change all these signs. And you're going to add these two together. So take your black marker and put a plus in the middle. All right, I set them up. Do them. On the next page, I'll write them, but I want you to start them. If you have to already. So far we've covered like three or four good test questions out of 4.4. Now you're going to see some homework questions and they're going, to, they're going to be lawful wordy and things like that. Just try to get through them. Send them to me Monday or Tuesday and I'll try to get through them. But I'm not going to give you wordy questions on the test. I'm going to give you questions like this or like the one we just did, or like the one with the piecewise function, where you have part of a function, then you have another part. That's the kind of questions I'm going to give you. Bare bones, calculus, antiderivative mechanics. I'm not going to ask you, you know, who, who, who went to the Wimbledon match and what were, their, what were their addresses. I'm not going to ask you those stupid questions. Okay? So... I call them Philadelphia lawyer questions. They're about half a page long. All right, so we've got zero to one <clears throat> of x cubed minus x squared minus 2x dx plus orange. 0 to 2 of negative x cubed plus x squared plus 2x dx. x to the fourth over 4 minus x to the third over 3 minus 2x, I'm going to write this out, 2x squared over 2, which is x squared, evaluated at negative 1 and 0. Now, even though the 0 knocks all this out, you're subtracting from 0, so that's going to make this different, so you better write it out. So all of this goes to 0 with 0, minus, and we're going to rewrite that in just a minute. Plus, negative x to the fourth over four, plus x to the third over three, plus two x squared over two, and that's x squared. Evaluated at zero and two. Now you're subtracting zero, does that matter? Not really. So we're going to put a zero here and just mark through it because we don't really need it. When you're subtracting zero, it doesn't change anything. So plus bracket, bracket, <coughs> minus zero. So that's going to be parentheses to the fourth over 4, minus parentheses to the 3, over 3, 
minus parentheses squared. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. Negative parentheses to the fourth over 4 plus parentheses to the third over 3 plus parentheses squared. And that's going to be a 2, 2, and 2. Negative 1 fourth minus, be a minus plus a negative, that'd be plus 1 third minus 1. Y'all check my math right there. Plus, getting dizzy changing all these pins. Negative. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So that's going to be negative 16 over 4 plus 8 over 3 plus 4. Now this negative is going to distribute. And that's going to give you negative 1 fourth minus 1 third plus 1. Plus, and my brackets, uh, negative 16 over 4, plus 8 over 3, plus 4. Well, what happens to this negative 16 over 4 and this 4? They cancel. Good job. How did it... Um this might be a dumb question again, but how did you change those signs in that like last equation? Because you don't have the zero written with the negative, right but here. it's written in the beginning. Right here? In the orange one. Over here? Yeah, how are those signs positive now? Because they were originally negative, weren't they? I don't think so. Am I like stupid? No, let me look. X cubed. Wait a minute. Oh, because of here. Oh. That step on the bottom right here. Right here. See that negative? Hold on, I'm still waiting. Oh, yeah, okay. That negative right there makes all these negative. Okay. That's okay. why you got to write these steps down because if you get something wrong, you got to go back and check yourself, and if you don't keep good steps like this, like I'm doing, you ain't going to find it. Okay, so those two cancel, and I think now I just got to get a common denominator. I'm just going to get a common denominator of 12, um, 12, 12, 12, plus, minus, minus. Plus orange twelve. Three will go into twelve four times. Four times eight is thirty-two. I'm sorry about the sunlight. Okay. And over here, four will go into twelve three times one is three. Three will go into twelve four. And that'll be 12 twelfths. So what's negative 7 plus 12? 5? Y'all check me. What is negative 7 plus 12? 5? Yes. Be 5 twelfths plus 32 twelfths. Ah! plus 32 twelfths and that gives you a final answer of 37 twelfths and 36 that's going to be 3 and 1 twelfth somebody tell me what 1 divided by 12 is what's 1 divided by 12 
point one. Is that good enough? Square units. So the area in those two humps is 3.1 square units. That could be 3.1 square miles. That could be 3.1 square inches. It could be 3.1 acres. It could be 3.1 cubic feet, which would mean you got to take off this dirt and this dirt right here to make a level. This is a little mound of dirt here, and this is a mound of dirt here. That area is 3.1 cubic meters. I mean, that's well, it's different because you got to add, got to add the three dimension to it. But it's same concept. You're finding the area under the curve. You got to multiply it by how long it is by five. Then that would be 15.1 cubic feet, uh, cubic yards, or cubic feet, or whatever the the units are. Okay. Now, I just showed you three questions that will be on the test. So what I would suggest you do is look over your homework. And I'm going to pull up your homework here. While I pull up the homework. I don't have any idea what time it is, so I figure I've got about 15 minutes at least. Y'all check me. There's the homework. That's not it. I thought I had a homework problem pulled in. Oh, there it is. Uh, let me pick one that I would pick. Let me look and see. I think we did one like this one. I'm trying to find one that I would like. In other words, when I see it, boom, there it is right there. All right, do that one. And they give you, they uh, see, I wouldn't do that. I, I shouldn't give you this one on the test. Because they make you, they, they give you negative 2 to what? Positive 3. They even give you the intersection point. That sucks. So go ahead and do this one. I want to know the area between negative 2 and positive 3. Go ahead. I'm going to give you all, it says 416 right now. I'll give you all a minute to set it up. Notice I didn't say do it. I said set it up. They're starting to make Biden's wife sit with him in interviews. You know why? Keep it on track. 
They are. They're starting to interview him with his wife. I guess also so he won't sniff any women. <laughs> he really is a creepy guy. He is very creepy. <laughs> that daggum governor up there in Michigan, she's crazy. She makes AOC look smart. <laughs> I mean, she's crazy. You can't go out and buy you can go out and buy bread, but you can't buy a pack of seeds to plant in your garden. She's lost her <laughs> mind. Did she like only keep open the nece like the necessary parts yeah. of the You can you can go out and buy groceries, but if you want to go to the hardware store and buy a plunger because you've got a clogged sink, you can't do that. Well that's dumb. Why yeah. seeds not essential? She I is, mean she is crazy. I mean what if you want to plant a garden? You can't. I mean I feel like that's essential. You yeah, can't. exactly. I think hardware stores here are considered essential, like Home Depot and stuff is still open. Exactly. That's why, well, South Carolina, we may be we may be ignorant in a lot of ways, but we've we got a lot of common sense. And that's yeah, why yeah. You're, you're, you're able to go get stuff, because our governor has a little bit of common sense. This woman in Michigan, she's crazy. Yeah. There is no reason... To not be able to go out and buy things that you want to buy because it's you consider it non-essential as a governor. Some of the most out-of-touch people in the world are politicians. I guarantee you, if you walked up to her and say, how much is a box of cereal in the grocery store? You think she could tell you? Hail to the no. no. Much less how to plant a garden. I bet she don't even know how to plant a garden. <laughs> I'm serious. They don't. Some of the worst, the, besides academia, some of the worst people as far as real world thought are politicians. Politicians and academia. Because I'm in the minority. I'm a farm boy that got a math degree. So I'm not an academia person. All right? I'm talking, you know who I'm talking about. These people that don't have any common sense and they teach you, you know, these subjects and they don't have any common sense. The worst the the, the worst one the worst in academia is the politician world. They have no clue. That's why we keep getting ripped off. That's why we got somebody up there now that not letting us get ripped off. And they can't stand it. They can't control them. F of X I better do that in one color. Let's do the pink. F of Have X. you been watching the White House briefing? Every day. I love it when he sticks it to the lamestream media. They get mad because the last 50 years, the, the, the media has told the president what to say, how to say it, and if you don't say it right, we're going to correct you. This president <laughs> says, I don't give a sh crap what y'all say. I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it because I'm doing it for America. And they can't stand it. Funny thing the other day, and obviously I think he was just like talking, like it was something he didn't really think about before he said it. And it was during one of these briefings he was like, the greatest power that I have is the power that the president has. Yeah. Which is very great. He, he <laughs> said it was like, his power was absolute. I think. Yeah. And, and they took it, and they ran with it, and said he's trying to be a king. Yeah, there was, like, right after that, it, like, switched to somebody, and it said that. And I was like, okay, like, he just wasn't thinking. Like, his sentence was out right. Like, I feel like he was trying to say that his power is, like, pure. Like, it's, you know, not that it's... Yeah, he was, what, was saying, it, what he's trying to say is this. The federal government does have a place in emergency situations. If you yeah. try to have 50 chiefs, try to tell how to go a certain way, you can't have that. You can't have 50 different Indian chiefs trying to tell the federal government what to do. you got to have one person. And that's what he was trying to talk about. we got to have one person to help, to, to, to mediate. And yeah. he's not saying he's going to go out with a bull whip and whip all the 
governors. That ain't what he's saying. And people with common sense realize that. Yeah. No, they want to make him out to be some kind of... The only reason, there's only one reason they don't like him. They can't control him. Think of a think of an ex-spouse or ex-boyfriend or girlfriend that tried to control you, and then when you broke away from them, what did they do? They went crazy. They go crazy <laughs> when you get break away from them. That's what the media, they're going crazy because they can't control the presidency like they have the last 50 years. So anyway, I'll shut up. I have no idea what these look like. Okay, good. They got it over there on the right. Thank you. This is where I'm glad they do this right here because you need it. All right, so I'm going to do the pink. And I know I might run out of time here, but it's only us three. So, or y'all three. So I'm going to go... And Can I stay on with Say again? Yeah, I have, like, about the last test. I, I'm sorry. What would you say? It broke up. Can I, can I stay on with you after a little bit? I have questions about the last test. No, I'm not going to be on the clock, so I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I'll be I'm glad to help you. Okay. All right, so there's my two points, and I'm going to take a black marker, and I'm going to highlight this one and this one. Now, if you did not have these, you would take your handy-dandy red marker and you would say x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 24x squared equals negative 19x plus 138. And you would solve for x. Now, the reason they're not asking you to solve for x it's because this is to the what degree? I'm sorry. Hold on. Why are they not asking you to solve it algebraically? Because that fourth degree, you'd have to do at least a page of algebra to, to get these two answers. That's why. So as you go, as you advance in mathematics, the more you're going to rely on the calculator because that's why it's there so you don't have to do all of this algebra. And that's going to be 8 to the 4th minus 8x third plus 24x plus 19x minus 138 which is a bear. That's going to be a bear to uh, solve. So with that being said they want to find this area in yellow. So we're going to set it up. And now which one is the region? The green is the high side. So the high side is this. So we're going to subtract this from from the green. So I'm going to set it up and I'm going to set it up with the high side or the antiderivative. I'll do it in yellow. The antiderivative from what was those points? From negative 2 to positive 3 of Where's my green? Green, negative 19x plus 138 minus the peach, x to the fourth minus 8x to the third plus 24x squared. Dx.
I'm trying to get it out of the sunlight where you can see it. I don't know where that sun's coming from. You got a work Okay. Now I'm going to take it one more step before I go to the other page. From negative 2 to 3. And I'm just going to write it in blue now because I'm not going to write all that in yellow. Negative 19x plus 138 minus x to the fourth plus 8x to the third minus 24x squared dx. Now, you're not going to be able to combine like terms. You just got to put everything in order. So let's go ahead and put everything in order. And that's going to be from negative 2 to 3 of negative x to the fourth plus 8x to the third minus 24x squared minus 19x isn't that a minus 8x to the third? What? Isn't that a negative 8x to the third? The negative and the negative make it a positive. Hold on. Oh, I messed up the sign. That was my fault. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. My bad. Okay. So... Negative x to the fifth over 5 plus 8x to the fourth over 4 minus 24x to the third over 3 minus 19x squared over 2 plus 138x evaluated at negative 2 and 3. Now you need to clean it up. And you could say negative one fifth times x to the fifth if you wanted to. Eight and four is two. Eight minus nineteen halves x to the second plus one thirty-eight x evaluated at negative two and three. And of course, my mouse falls on the floor. <laughs> my mouse is about to fall apart because I got one of these little mouse that mice that you can carry with you. It's a small mouse, and, my, and it lights up on its own. And my black cat gets on this table, and he. And the only thing he does, he pushes it off the edge until it falls on the floor. And it's about to fall apart because he's busted it like three times. I don't know why. He, so I have to put it in a box, and well, a little shoe box, so he won't mess with it. All right. Now, I'm just going to, I mean, you can, well, let's just go ahead and do it. It's going to be a mess. But let's go ahead and do it. So negative one fifth parentheses to the fifth plus two parentheses to the fourth minus eight parentheses to the third minus nineteen halves parentheses squared plus one thirty eight parentheses and I'm gonna put a minus and then I'm going to put another block. This is the first block. And then another block. Negative one fifth. Parentheses to the fifth. Plus two. I should have gave y'all a zero on one of these. Minus eight to the third. Minus 19 halves. Squared. Oops. Squared. Plus 138. 
parentheses and then three Okay, so let's go ahead and, so that's going to be 3 to the 5th power. Well, 3 to the 4th power is 90, is 81. 243, somebody check 3 to the 5th power for me. So that's going to be negative 1 5th yeah. times 243. Plus 2, 3 times 3, 3 times 3 is 9 times 9, which is 81. Minus 8 times 27. Minus 19 halves times 9. Plus, uh, let's see, 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 3, 9, 10, 11. Bring you one before 14. Somebody check that 138 times 3 and see if you get 414. Minus yeah. negative 1 fifth times negative 32 plus 2 times 2 times 2 is 4, 16. Minus 8 times negative 8 minus 19 halves times 4 plus or minus 276. Now y'all check my math. This is going to be uh, negative 243 over 5 plus 162 minus, well, 8 times 7 is 58, 5 times 2, 218 minus 9 times 9 is 81, bring you 8, that'd be 7 over 2 plus 414 minus negative one fifth times that'd be 32 positive 32 over 5 plus 32 plus 64 that cancels here 2 times 19 is 38 Minus 276. Okay, now I need somebody to take the calculator and add. Well, just go ahead and do all this adding and just do it with your calculator. I need somebody to do this for me. And I need somebody to do this. Now you should be able to put it all in the calculator. Parentheses, negative 243 over 5, close parentheses, plus 162, minus 218, <coughs> minus parentheses, 171 over 2, plus, close parentheses, plus 414. Somebody tell me what you get. I got 394.5 for this one. Okay, did y'all get 394.5? Yeah. Okay, somebody give me the second part. <coughs> that should be pretty easy. Only got one fraction.
I got negative two eleven point six. Negative yep. two eleven. That's what I got. Point six. And what happens to those two negatives? They come positive. And somebody add those two together. Six hundred and six point one. Now, buddy, if you can do that problem, you can do any problem I give you on the test and not have a bunch of careless mistakes. But notice, I did everything what? Step by what? Step. I did everything step by step. I didn't do like some of these students. Oh, I can do that between two blue lines of notebook paper. Yeah, whatever. That's why students don't do good in math, because they don't do everything step by step. They try to do everything in two seconds. And I probably got it wrong, but let's see. 606.1. Where's my problem? Did I not have it up? Oh, come on. There it is. 606.1. And it's going to say type in as a fraction. No, nobody does area in fractions in the real world. They want it as a fraction. No, they got something different. So do 875 divided by 2. What did you get? What's, what did you get? Did I, is this the same problem? Yep. So we've got an error somewhere. 437.5. I'm sorry, what? It's 437.5. So we've got an error somewhere. But that's that's not a big deal, okay? Most of the time, I'll be honest with you, when you go into a calculus class, they just want you to set up the integral. Because actually, you can do the integral, you can do all this math in your calculator. What did you say it was again for what? 437.5. Okay, so y'all need to work on this one and get 437.5. And I was pretty confident we didn't have a mistake, but evidently we have a mistake somewhere. So I would suggest you take this problem and do it over for homework, and you can work on some of the first few problems. You go back to the homework. You see, most of them are just area under curve. Now, I'm not going to get into the wordy problems and right now. There's a good one. There's one like the boundaries. So that's not going to be too difficult because you got two simple, you got two simple uh, equations. The more simple the equation, the better off you're going to be as far as the math goes. That, that previous one, that was a bear because you had to the fourth degree. So that's why it was a bear. Okay, I'm going to shut her down. We went 10 minutes over, so I'm going to shut her down.